YouTube. Welcome to the shop. Today we're going to build a laptop case. This case has an inlaid top on it. This is uh, just an image I found off of YouTube. And I scaled it to this size and uh, inlaid it in with maple and walnut. The whole body is made out of cherry. And on the front, and it's got a little latch and you can open it up and you can see the felt on the inside. I've recently gotten a Facebook page. I uh, like me on Facebook, follow me on Google Plus, and also follow me on Lumberjocks. I've got links in the description for those and annotations on the side. Let's get started. So here are the plans I quickly drew up on SketchUp. They're kind of rough estimates of my laptop that I'm going to be building. Get a quick look here. And then on the top, I plan on doing some inlay with uh, some maple and walnut and a cherry body. And then I quickly drew it to scale on the back side. Well, I just got everything glued up. Uh, these three pieces here will be the bottom and that big panel will be the top. Alright, well I let the glue dry up for a couple days. It's been sitting in the clamps for quite a while. And uh, gonna undo the clamps and see what we got. So this is gonna be my bottom for the case. It's got some cool design with the sapwood on the edges. I think I, I kind of made that an accent, so we'll see what that looks like whenever we're done. And then this one's going to be the top. And again, I did the same with the accent. Although most of the top you're not going to see because of the inlay. Alright, well I'm just going to scrape off all the glue and then uh, we're going to get started planning. <laughs> Okay, so after the planing step, I'm just going to joint one edge, that way it's square to the faces. And then the next step, I'm just going to rip them, that way the both edges are parallel. parallel.
Well, I got them both cut, and now this is the beginnings of a laptop case. The top panel is a little bit thicker than the bottom, and that is because the top's going to have uh, inlay put in it, and you need to account for that. That way you're not routing through the innards of the box, because this will be milled out in the middle here, and same with the uh, bottom. And that'll be milled out, that way your laptop can sit in the middle. Our next step is to, uh, I think, start laying out the inlay. And uh, I got a diagram over there that, uh, that'll help me. This is roughly what it'll look like. I just uh, roughly drew this and chose a sheet of paper would be about the right proportions to put to this. Uh, it's not hard coming up with these angles. Uh, if you count this for being zero degrees, just add 22 and a half every time. So 22, 45, 67 and a half, 90, and just keep going around all the way until you come back. Well, I'm ready to start routing this out. I'm just really being careful with making sure I got my straight edge lined up. And uh, I'll just eyeball the corners, get it close, and then hammer the rest out with a chisel. And how I came up with this dimension is I have a three quarter inch bit in here and uh, I took a measurement from the end of the bit to the edge here. For me, that happens to be two and five eighths, but uh, inlay will be three sixteenths of an inch thick, and uh, I'll mill the inlay to be a quarter and then sand it flush. It'll be a little bit of sanding, but I have a drum sander, so. It's gonna take two passes to get all these. <laughs> and then after that, I'll just hog out the middle by hand. Well, I got the one border done. Now I'll move on to the secondary border and then hog out the center. And after that, I'll chisel all the corners and make sure they're uh, nice and square. The more time you spend making sure everything's nice and square and accurate is the less trouble you'll have whenever you're making the inlay. Well, I got the second border done, and now I'm just going to hog out the middle. I'm going to start at the very center and work my way out. That way the base of the router can stand on this and part of what's left over. So let's start at the center. It's okay if the bottom's not terribly even, uh, that'll, the inlay will never notice that. Okay, I just got the uh, lines all marked out for the innards where the laptop will sit. I also have little finger spots, that way you can uh, get your fingers in to pick up the laptop once it's in the case. And I have that for the bottom and the top. I don't know if you can see the lines, but you can kind of see front up there but uh, I got that all laid out. Well, I'm gonna start routing out the insides of this, and then I'm only gonna do the edges, and then I'm gonna hog out the center with a uh, four center bit.
Well, I just finished boring out the inside with the drill press, and that's what it looks like. I'll take a chisel and knock off these little ones. Some might even fall off. Whenever you're drilling and you have the inlay already milled out, it wouldn't hurt to put some spacers in the middle here. That way, whenever you're drilling down, you're pressing, you're not forcing or putting any more stress on this uh, center section than you have to. For me, this is only about a sixteenth of an inch thick, so it's pretty thin. And I put some spacers in there to help with that. While I have my chisel out, I might as well chisel these corners, make them square. Alright, well I'm going to start ripping up these pieces into the inlay strips. And I'm making my inlay about a quarter of an inch and then I'll sand it to the 316. tell whenever I'm productive by the dense fog of sawdust. Well, I'm going to start ripping the inlay strips down. It only took me about an hour to make this inner portion here. Uh, it w went pretty quickly once you got a rhythm and you mark center point and you just line it up and just sand the edges until it all fits and just work your way around. There's uh, 41 pieces to this. Well, that took a little bit of effort to get the glue up. I had, uh, for whatever reason, my pieces weren't aligning, and I, by the end here, I was way off. Uh, but uh, with a little bit of work with the uh, mallet and, uh, and a chisel, I was able to kind of pound them and move them all around and sink them in. Just uh, work quickly whenever you do that. 
And uh, the final step that I'm going to do is just put some uh, wax paper on top and then uh, lay a piece of plywood over it and put some weight on it. And I'm just going to use a couple routers that I have. And I'll let that sit for a couple hours before I go to do anything. I'm getting ready to start sanding uh, the inlay down with the drum sander. I have uh, 80 grit on it, and then every uh, once in a while I'll take a little cleaner and clean off the grit. That way it's still sanding uh, sharply. And uh, we'll get this uh, all smoothened out, all the glue and stuff. And uh, this is a homemade drum sander. I do have other builds, other videos on this. And uh, be sure to check it out on my uh, channel. Well, it's been about an hour since I started, and I uh, just finished drum sanding it. It's nice and flat now. I can see where all the spots where I wasn't totally accurate, uh, but that'll that'll happen. I should have been more careful about what uh, pieces of maple I chose. This one centerpiece here is a different color, different color maple than the rest. I'm pretty sure it came out of the same wood, but uh, or same same piece of lumber, but uh, it's the way it goes. But once you finish boring step number one, it's time to start boring step number two, and that is more sanding. But now I'm going with 80 grit on a random orbit sander. Well, I finished sanding everything to 120, except for the interior. The interior will be lined with felt. And I'm going to start uh, routing out the mortises for the or datas, whatever you want to call them, for the hinges. And I just have these very tiny brass hinges that I'm going to use. I'm going to use three of them. I think that would look nicer than uh, just two, being that they're so small. Now that I have them rough, roughly routed out, I'm going to take a chisel to it and uh, square them up. Well, I've gotten all the mortises for the uh, hinges ready. Just used a uh, finished up using the router and chisel, and uh, these screws are so small. I think I might run them in by hand. Well, I found a latch that I wanted, and unfortunately, it took me a while to find something like this with a key in it. And it's a little bit taller than the actual laptop itself. Not very much, only like an eighth of an inch. So what I decided to do is I'm going to use these two little blocks of wood that I made, and they're going to sit like that on the case. So it will stick up above the case, but I don't think it's going to look terrible. And then that will sit in the front like so. I'm just going to use a little bit of glue and uh, one or two air nails. And do the same with the top. So after I got the hinge installed, I sanded everything smooth. This is now up to 220 grit. And I also routed the edges. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking whenever I put this block of wood on. I should have routed the edge first, then put the block of wood on. Uh, but I wasn't able to get it. So the next step after sanding everything is putting on a, a coat of lacquer. And I get mine from Sherwin-Williams. Uh, it's a uh, waterproof stuff.
laptop case turned out well. It's got a nice lacquer finish. After brushing it, I ended up actually spraying it. It was, I uh, barely got the shop warm enough to do that. And I got the top of this just almost perfect. There's a few spots on the inlay that got a little divot where the putty settled in and sank in almost like caulking. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's a three-part series. It was a long one, but uh, it's m really my first build video that I've done. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Like me on Facebook. Like me on Google+. Follow me on Lumberjarks. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Have a good one.